Welcome fifth grade teachers to a Passport to Social Studies video. My name is Mr. Giordano and I'm the virtual content specialist for fifth grade social studies. Today, we will be looking at our unit two, day 10 lesson. The lesson is titled, The Impact of the Columbian Exchange. The focus question for this lesson is, what effect did the Columbian Exchange have in the lives of people? And the learning objective is to understand the consequences of the Columbian Exchange. Today, students in your class will be researching one part of the Columbian Exchange. In small groups, students will create a poster or chart, map, or infographic that gives details about one aspect of the Columbian Exchange. During the wrap-up phase of this lesson, students will need to share their work with the other groups. This is best facilitated in an in-person gallery walk. However, a remote sharing is possible by having students share their screen or some other sharing protocol, depending on what your learning platform allows. Today, we will be exploring three strategies for this share out or wrap up of the lesson. The three strategies include a Flipgrid reflection video, a Screencastify video recording or tutorial, and then a live screen share via a Google Meet. Just a reminder, the work that students will, will be completing looks like this. This is the model template provided in our Passport to Social Studies lesson, where students are looking at these four indicators for their small group research. Another part of this project is to make sure that all of the students are dividing up the work and that everyone is participating. This really requ requires the students to each be assigned a role or a specific job for their small group to help to keep them engaged and to ensure that the work is divided up fairly. Here are some suggested roles or jobs for the small group work. At this point, you are encouraged to, to pause this video to take a deeper look at these various roles, including a student facilitator or discussion leader, a screen share or typer, a time manager, a reporter, a chat monitor, and of course, a participator, which is, of course, everyone who will be engaged in this work. I highlighted the reporter's job, which is to share out the response to the main group. This person may have an important role when it comes to this phase of the project, which is our wrap up or our share out phase. So what are some ideas for sharing out group work? Here are some asynchronous ideas for how to do this. The designated reporter for each group could complete an asynchronous task for the share out portion of the activity, including recording a Flipgrid video explaining and speaking to the project for classmates to watch at their leisure and leave feedback as comments for that group. Students can press options, then record screen to share their screen in the video recording. So this is the link to the Flipgrid website where you can sign up as a teacher and create your account. And I'm going to show you an example of what this might look like and what you might post for students on your Google Classroom page to complete this asynchronous share out. First, when you click this link or you give this to students, they'll first see this page where they'll have to sign in. They'll join with Google and they'll have to use uh, the at schools.nyc.gov email address or your school domain email address, depending on what you put in when you set up your Flipgrid and your um, topic for this project. So again, that, that part is up to you, but students will have to sign in. That way we make sure it's closed off and only open for them and private for them to participate on. Then once they gain access, they'll see directions posted by the teacher and they'll be able to press this big red record sign to then record their video. They'll also see over here the other videos that other students have posted and they can click on that and leave a comment of feedback or a comment of um, an area of growth or a, a glow for, those, for that group based on their presentation. So I'm just going to click this record so you can see what this looks like. So what will happen will, is that you'll have a pop-up of the computer screen, your video camera, and you'll be able to press options. The student will be able to press options and then record screen. 
And that will allow them to then record their screen and they'll be able to pull up on their screen their project and speak to that and explain to the, to the viewers their project, what they did, and just read it out loud. You can also set a time limit when you create your topic. I set this one for 10 minutes. It could be shorter. 10 minutes was the maximum amount of time. Um, other things that students can do include these effects, and we'll go deeper into that. I'm actually going to record another video after this showing you how to create a Flipgrid page and how to create um, a discussion topic such as this with the different effects available. And then once it's posted, you as the teacher, you could either turn on the option to allow it to automatically be processed, or you would have to approve it yourself and have that moderating feature turned on to first view it and make sure it's okay before it gets sent out for other students to see. So that's one strategy for this asynchronous share out. Another strategy that you could use is using Screencastify where students can record their screen using the Screencastify Chrome extension. Um, this will allow students up to, uh, to make a free account and record up to five minutes for free. And the reporter in the group can show us the project and speak to it, then send the class or you, the teacher, a link to the video tutorial for then you or for the class to view at their leisure. So this is the link to the Chrome extension. So we'll take a look at that. This is what it looks like. And what, what the student would do is they would press add to Chrome. And from there, they would be able to have access to it. They would just log in with their school account or the DOE account, and they would be able to then record from their screen. So what they would do is once they're on their project, I could pretend that let's say this is the project for the students and they're going to speak to it. They can go into the Chrome extension, which would live up here in their bar. They would press this button. And what that would do is that that would allow them to then press record. I'm actually using it right now to record this video, so I can't quite show you exactly what it would look like, but it would have a record button, they would press it, and it would start recording the screen. Um, and again, they would have up to five minutes for free to do that. Once they're done, they would press stop. And what will automatically happen is a new tab will pop open with the video and it will download, and then it will allow them to take the link from the video and send it right to you. They can send it in an email, they could post it on the Google Classroom stream. So that's another way to have this asynchronous share out for a project. Something else that you can do is have the live piece of this, the synchronous, where it's happening all in live real time. So this looks a little bit different. Um, the designated reporter for each group they may complete the share out by sharing their screen during a live Google Meet or a Zoom call. The teacher can also share their screen on behalf of the student and then have the student project open and ready to show the class. The teacher can ask the student to direct them to different parts of the project that they would like the class to see. And the student reporter would be asked to unmute at some point and then explain the project to the class and speak to it. And when they were finished presenting the work, uh, the screen sharing would stop once that was completed concluded and the other group members instead of just sitting back they can be encouraged to share out in the chat maybe respond to any questions that other students have for them um, or even share a direct link to the project for the other classmates to view a tip for the teachers is just to really think about modeling how to do this for the class and practicing how to share one screen, including which buttons to press, because this, this can be a little bit confusing for students. You would want to remind the students that we can see anything on their desktop when they present their entire screen. So this routine of screen sharing, of student screen sharing, will take practice, will take patience, will take trust for it to really work. Um, and in your directions, you would also want to emphasize that it may be easier for the students to present only a tab when they opt to screen share, because when they do that, they're only uh, allowing the viewers to see one specific tab during the screen share rather than the entire desktop. And so that specific tab that they select would be the tab that contains their open and completed project. So let me show you what that would look like. I'm just gonna open up a Google Meet uh, practicing it from there and we're going to take a look at how students would share their screen what they would press and again it's similar for what you would press also as the teacher okay so I'm going to press present now and see this pops up so your entire screen means that they can see everything 
a window is just one specific window. So let's say you had two windows open side by side or a tab, right? So a tab would mean that they can just select one of the tabs that are open for the viewers in the class to see. So that's the one that I would recommend. Again, if they only want the classmates to see one specific thing, for example, let's say this was, I was the student and this was my project. I only want them to see this. I would press share and they're only going to be able to see this tab. Okay. So again, that's just a little tidbit for the students to be aware of, and it really helps them get comfortable screen sharing. Some of them sometimes can be a little nervous that students can see their whole screen and there's ways around that just by teaching them which buttons to press. Okay, everyone. Um, I want to thank you teachers for joining me today to learn more about these various strategies for conducting some virtual share outs with your classes, following a small group project, um, you know, whether, one, whether you want to do that asynchronously or synchronously, you see that there's different variety with that. Um, I think that the easiest way to do this is probably through the Flipgrid. Students, it's very student friendly, that tool. And so what I'm going to do is record a video after this, further explaining how to create a Flipgrid for your class, how to create a channel and be able to use it throughout the year. Um, and as a reminder, many of these protocols can also be applied to sharing out individual projects too, not even just group projects. So I want to thank you again and wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you so much.